Welcome back. You're watching Commodity Champions and uh, green energy and green efficiency are the two buzzwords dominating discussions among world leaders. Leaders will be gathering once again to discuss climate goals in Dubai later this year. India too is aiming to become net zero in carbon emissions by 2070. To discuss the key priorities on green goals and climate financing, I caught up with Freddie Swan, who's Danish ambassador to India earlier. I began by asking him about the progress on the net zero carbon emission goal countries are committing to look at, especially at COP26. Let's listen in. You know, I have uh, served as an ambassador for almost 10 years in India, and I have seen a huge progress, but also seen a huge determination really to move towards green uh, uh, growth and energy transition. And uh, when I crisscross the Indian uh, subcontinent, I see I a strong will really to deliver on the very, very ambitious goals that your Honorable Prime Minister Render Modi uh, put uh, to the rest of the world uh, back in Glasgow COP26. Now we are entering COP28 uh, soon, and I'm pretty sure that we will be able to see uh, very substantial progress by, uh, by India in that context. Hmm. I mean, as you said, there are various opportunities that India has displayed, but there have been challenges as well, especially for small to large scale industrial projects. I'm assuming at different levels, many of them have faced one challenge or other. What's your sense on uh, what are the challenges that need to be cleared or, or you know, resolved right now? Uh, there are a lot of challenges. So it's not only for India, but it's uh, across the world. One, one big challenge is, of course, that we are all looking towards uh, big infrastructure projects and investments. But, you know, one, one important thing is that energy efficiency, as an example, is just a low-hanging fruit. And I'm happy I'm sitting here also with a company, the, the Danish major in uh, installation, Rockwool, Rockwool out here. They offer a lot of solutions that can help uh, a lot of companies and a lot of small manufacturing uh, units really to save energy and to really to be part of the green transition. So, of course, it's a humongous task, but there are opportunities. There are skills available also from Denmark. So let's take it into the scale of India. We stand ready and Danish skills and Danish companies consequently are ready too. Hmm. You spoke about Rockwell and well, yes, that's a Danish company. How would you see the company now helping in energy efficiency? I mean, I do understand that the company has a huge worldwide knowledge on the subject. Yeah, but, uh, we, you know, we are all facing tons of issues related to climate changes. Mm -hmm. And one, one uh, issue is, of course, uh, uh, how do you uh, secure better use, more efficient use of energy? And uh, such a product that uh, Rockwool or Rockwool is developing on based on stone wool is a very important uh, part of a trajectory that could reduce the uh, uh, consumption of energy. Then some critics, uh, critics will say, okay, when you do this uh, stone wool, you use a lot of energy. That's true. But mm -hmm. uh, Rockwool, Rockwool is undergoing a transition where they're going from traditional melting towards electrically based uh, melting. So that will also help to reduce uh, both the energy consumption but also the uh, uh, CO2 uh, footprint. And what we all need is decarbonization. And uh, if you have a product that uh, will be able to really reduce in a t 100 times uh, the energy consumption, uh, because it was uh, a good product uh, to start with, it was less uh, energy consuming uh, to start with, then of course the longevity of such product will be very, very important. And as you know, this is not only about uh, uh, energy efficiency, energy consumption, it's also about uh, fire protection, uh, sound protection and so forth. So if you have products that will also improve the livelihood and be a kind of green contributor to to a uh, decarbonization that's fantastic and uh, that's uh, what uh, this company Rockwool, Rockwool uh, stands for and I'm so happy to see what they have achieved over these uh, many years and India is a big big opportunity for, for a company like uh, Rockwool. 
Mm. Uh, you talked earlier that there is a lot of determination in the Indian markets. We've seen a government put a push as well. There are subsidies and there are measures taken to ensure even support uh, uh, the energy efficiency. Uh, but there is as much investments that you can make. How would you look at infrastructure kind of investments that you have seen? There is push from uh, companies as well. How are you uh, looking and how are you rating all of that? I rate it very, very high, and, and let me give you an example. Um, when I came to India second time back in 2019, uh, Denmark and India, we decided really to launch a green strategic partnership. And what that's about? That's about really connecting the missions uh, of your honorable prime minister as well as the Indian government to set new targets, a new trajectory for uh, developing this uh, huge nation. And then the skills from Denmark, being whatever technology we have developed, what kind of practice uh, experiences that we have gained over so many, many years. And today Denmark is a front runner in, in energy efficiency, in uh, decarbonization, uh, use of renewables and so forth. And of course it, it takes a lot of money. but. The point is that it will serve a better course, and uh, there are also tons of jobs uh, into that equation. So we, we need really to help and inspire India. And I'm pretty sure that uh, government to government cooperation is, of course, uh, a must. But when it comes to really to deliverables, then it can only be the private sector. And uh, energy efficiency, as I said, is really a low-hanging fruit, and there are tons of opportunities for for the Indian economy to grow on riding on a green transition and green growth. And therefore, Rockwell is a perfect partner in that trajectory. And you know, these products are not that very expensive. So of course, sir, it takes some energy, as I said, in the production phase. But when you can use this uh, product for year after year, and thereby also gaining the uh, the energy efficiency and so forth, then it's also very cost effective and in fact it's also negative in the uh, uh, CO2 footprint. So in fact you take out, uh, uh, take out uh, CO2 uh, from that process and then uh, it's contributing to India's future green growth trajectory. And with it, all the ambitions and, and targets that your Honorable Prime Minister has uh, uh, launched uh, in Glasgow, I'm pretty sure we'll see even more in, in Dubai when we have COP28, then you'll see a huge change, not only of India, but also of the world. And we need that. Mm. Oh, well, absolutely. And you talked about the importance of the private trade getting into this as well. So what's your sense? What kind of tie-ups, what kind of conversations are you having with the private companies in India, one? And second is, uh, you mentioned COP28 as the thing to watch out from here. Any agenda? And what would you especially be looking forward to? Uh, let me take the last question first. COP28, we have to deliver. I mean, uh, the last uh, uh, COP, COP27 in Egypt was, of course, a kind of a stepping stone from COP26, and now we are going to travel to COP28. But we do it on uh, riding on the uh, hopeful uh, contributions from the Indian G20 presidency. We need money, we need green financing, and so forth, and we need to adapt all the uh, international financing institutions like the World Bank, IMF, and so forth, really to be uh, adapted to the challenges that we are facing uh, when it comes to the climate change. But we also have to deliver on the, uh, the uh, uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So uh, there in Dubai, I hope to see really a tangible success and tangible progress that will provide sufficient finances for the green transition. And hopefully we'll also see a lot of green financing being put uh, uh, towards or in a more direct way to the SMEs, or whether it's in India, whether it's the rest of the world, or Africa, and so forth. So that's important. As to the first question related to the private sector and so forth, uh, government to government cooperation can only set the targets and, and, and set the direction. When it comes really to deliver on uh, energy efficiency, you need to have companies who have developed the technologies, who have put money in, into developing innovative uh, solutions and so forth. And in our daily interaction, both with the Danish companies but also with the Indian companies, we are trying really to secure that we can find the platform so the, this, this private sector 
uh, through their interventions, through, uh, through their uh, investments, will be able really to uh, change whatever is needed in order to cope with the climate changes. I'm pretty sure I've met many Danish companies, of course, but also many, many Indian companies who are really investing heavily in the green transition. So what we all need is a green, uh, strong, uh, sustainable India, and that can only come through really business-to-business uh, 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 -business cooperation. And Rockwell Roxol is such an example. It's a low-hanging fruit. So if you are uh, looking for solutions that will help you coping with the, all these challenges, then uh, this company, this product, as an example, is the way forward. All right, we hear that so the green transition with green efficiency will come with green money. The governments are working together, but of course the private sector will have to start chipping in quite soon and quite in a big number there. Well, that's all the time that we have on uh, this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you so much for watching.